All right, what's up, guys? I am extremely excited to bring you this deck profile. It is another Tenyi deck profile, but it plays a very, very interesting card called Giant Ballpark. It is also the first going second Tenyi card that I've produced so far. Uh, let's just get started, honestly. Play three copies of it at Hara. It is, I'd say, the second best, probably, yeah, probably the second best Tenyi card in the deck. Because this one basically, first of all, any Tenyi monster, you can special summon if you control no effect monster. So if you control no monster, you can special summon it for free. And then once you control a non-effect monster, like a non-effect link monster or a normal monster, you can also special summon it. Uh, second effect, if you control a non-effect monster, so, that, so you can control effect monsters and a non-effect monster. Which you have to have at least one, so this again can mean like a token or anything like that. Uh, so basically, if you control a non-effect monster, you can banish this from the graveyard and then uh, add a banished card from your from your you know, banished worm monster uh, back to your hand, which is really, really cool. Uh, and yeah, it can add some really, really nice stuff. We can talk about it later, but uh, next we've got three copies of Tenyi Spirit Vishuda. This is actually the best one. Uh, so the awesome card awesome part about this card is that you can special summon for free number one but number two you can banish it from your graveyard or from your hand in order to bounce a card on your opponent's side of the field and i have some sick combos with this card but we'll reveal that in a second uh we play two copies of nahata so yeah we play three of the good ones and then of all of the average ones we play two uh two copies of nahata this one basically you banish and you make your opponent's monster lose 1500 attack uh, during the battle and this one is actually one of the only like quick effect ones you can activate it during either player's turn uh, the first two that i showed you, you cannot activate during either player's turn this one you banish if you are a non-effect monster on your side of the field gets destroyed you can bring it back and then pop an opponent's monster which is pretty cool uh, and this one is another quick effect one uh, basically if your opponent targets one of your non-effect monsters uh, you can Banish this from the graveyard, negate and destroy. The card that targeted it uh, doesn't work against Sky Strikers. Some people were saying in my last video that card's really good against Sky Strikers. Uh, this card is actually not good against Sky Strikers because Sky Strikers have to target a non, usually target an effect monster. Like if you read uh, Widow Anchor, it targets an effect monster, negates its effect, and then takes it. But you don't have any effects to negate anyway. You're not an effect monster, usually a normal or a non effect monster. So this card just doesn't. Like, that just doesn't do anything against Widow Anchor anyway. But it's good against other stuff that does target. Uh, but that is it for the Tenyi cards. Next, we play three copies of Insect Knight. This is the strongest insect monster available as of right now. There's a new one coming out. Who knows when? It was announced. Honestly, it's probably supposed to be in Soul Fusion. It probably got cut because of another card. Uh, but this is the strongest normal insect monster that you can play. That I could find that's level four that's summonable so it's good for that but there's a 2000 attack one coming out I don't know when but it is coming out then we play also three copies of Neobug this is another just normal insect monster I wish I could replace Neobug for the one that I just talked about it's something something C if you look it up it's like a 2000 attack normal insect monster it should honestly it should have been out with the same time that Goki Poland and the giant ballpark came out but unfortunately got cut uh next we play one copy of goki pole uh again this is a going second deck just to remind you this card basically if it's sent to the graveyard so it's like a if it's sent to the graveyard so it never misses time and you can send it with any effect so that's really cool but basically when you send it to the graveyard you can add an insect monster's level four or lower to your hand and then you can, uh, if it's if it's a normal monster, special summon it and then destroy a card with higher attack than that monster. So it's like, if you send this to the graveyard, it's usually like a plus, plus, what is that, plus one. So a pretty decent card. You only play it at one because it's like a utility card. You don't want to ever draw it. You just want to send it off either the field spell or one of your other effects. Uh, next we play the token generators. I play three copies of Mare Mare. In this build, more than anything, you definitely want to play three. I always play three because I, I say this card is not a brick because a lot of people tell me to play one and they're like, well, you, you know, you can always send with vessel, but like this card doesn't search vessel. So if you don't draw vessel, then you don't get to use this, which sucks because this is a 
this card is a plus three, so I, I like I, I don't understand a world where you wouldn't want to use where you wouldn't want that in every single one of your opening plays, either going first or second. Because in the fir going first play, this card is a one card Appaloosa. This card is a one card F.A. Don Dragster. Going second, this card is a one card Borload, one card Boral Sword, one card Avermax. Like this card does so much for the deck. It's like a one it's like a one card boss monster. And when I say one card, I don't mean like this and the tokens automatically go into one of those, but you can link climb, because I know somebody said last time, like, hey, you know, it's not actually a one card. No, it is a one card, you gotta link climb. Uh but yeah, basically it's a it's like a one card, uh one of those. Also you can because the tokens are also worms, you can actually use it to summon your ten ye uh shaman, which is really cool. So I, I, I don't see why you wouldn't play three. You always, always, always want to start with this card. I wouldn't ever play less than three of this. It just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, next, we've got one copy of Phantom Sky Blaster. This is in the fourth token generator. You don't have a... Like, this deck doesn't normal summon, so it doesn't matter. If you just play as many good normal summons as you can, and this happens to be the best normal summon in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. Like, uh, in, ter in terms of four, four, a, a generic... This is the best generic link link building uh normal summon in the game right now i wish it was at three but it's unfortunately not because again it's our only like it's our only normal summon in the deck and this is for the wild stuff we play three copies of lava golem oh my god do i love this card oh geez all right so like your opponent could have a full a full board like i'm gonna use like a crazy crazy board let's say your opponent has like all of this and then like they have like a like a heretic heretic sphere up here like a heretic um the dragon balls whatever they're called the heretic sphere uh if you have a lava golem and a it's my other awesome card here vishuda i love this combo so you have a lava golem and a vishuda in hand uh basically you go standby phase they go oh yeah go then you go to a main phase Main phase one, you get the first move of main phase one. You tribute their two biggest threats. So in this case, we have the Borload. Actually, um, what is this? This is a Tenny Link. You tribute the Borload. You tribute the Abyss Dweller because we don't want them to negate our graveyard effects. You summon the Lava Golem. Then you special summon Vishuda. Uh, you link away Vishuda to summon the. You can summon the Tenny Monk. And then you can activate Vishuda in Grave, banish it from Grave, bounce the Lava Golem back to your hand, and then tribute these two, and then summon a second Lava Golem. So this thing can, no joke, this a Lava Golem and a Vishuda in hand can actually clear an entire, like, Thunder Dragon board. It can clear, like, Thunder Dragon, Pendulum board. Like, this card is actually, it's actually a pretty crazy combo. And it cuts out your normal summon, but if you've been listening carefully, we really don't normal summon in this deck anyway. There's, like, one single good normal summon. Everything else is just, like, you, you normal summon because you kind of have the normal summon. But most of the time, you do not normal summon in this deck whatsoever. Uh, so it's, it's like, yeah, that, it's, like, super broken. But, yeah, definitely Lava Golem is a must if you're going second. Uh... This card is actually better in this deck than evenly matched because you really want your battle phase because you want to use the uh, field spell to summon stuff. Because it's like the field spell, whenever you actually get to attack, is actually a plus two. Actually, it's a field spell. It's, it's a plus three. You're summoning three monsters. You're not giving anything up. So the field spell is actually a plus three. And it gives you like recursion and protection. But definitely Lava Golem is much better than evenly matched in this deck. You do not, under any circumstances, want to miss a battle phase. So definitely Lava Golem. Uh, next we've got our Hand Traps, which is Droll and Lockbird. Again, you want to just stun them real, real hard. And then OTK them basically the following turn. So this is a great card for that. You basically stun your opponent. Uh, this is good against Sky Strikers. This is good against... Uh, what else? Thunder Dragons this is very good against... The decks that would most decks would struggle against, this is actually really good against. Yeah, so... Again, this is a going second deck, that's why I play this. You can replace this with any hand trap. It's up to your liking. It's whatever you want, but that is it for the monsters. Really a monster mash this time, a lot of monsters. Uh, next, we've got three copies of Vessel of the Dragon Cycle. Uh, this card is basically a Foolish Burial and a Search in One. Uh, so basically, if you, can, if you can send a worm to the graveyard, which in most cases is going to be your Mare Mare. 
most of the time because this can summon three tokens in a turn and it's like a one card boar load boar sword whatever you want so you send that and then if you control a non-effect monster you can add a tangy monster to your hand which is you know it's utility you just add whatever you think you're going to use uh, but it's definitely, yeah, this is one of the better opening cards. Again, but like I always say, you don't open this all the time, and you have no way of searching it, so you do want to resolve Mare Mare every single time and get free. Yeah, like, get a free monster. <laughs> yeah, get free uh, free monsters on board, free link monster stuff. It's really, really good. Uh, best card in the deck. And then play one copy of Terraforming, one copy of Set Rotation. This is for the field spells. And we play three copies of giant ballpark just to explain this real quick basically during damage calculation if you battle with your opponent's monster or you know your opponent attacks you you attack him you can make neither player take any battle damage so you'd still lose the monster and then you can send a level four lower insect monster from your deck to your graveyard so remember you can send goki pole so goki pole is the one that lets you uh send another one and then and then basically pop one that has higher attack. So you can either take that route, or you can, if you send a normal monster, so let's say you send our homie here, Insect Knight, you send like, let's say for example, you send Insect Knight, you can summon two more of that from your deck, which just is like, like I said, it's like the field spell is like a plus three when it actually resolves, but it, it does resolve a lot because those conditions aren't that bad. Like battling a monster, and then getting three monsters is a pretty crazy condition. And this makes it so all of your tenny cards are live. Like this one's live. You can actually attack into your opponent's monster. Let one of these guys get destroyed. And then banish this from the graveyard. Bring this exact same thing back. And then pop that card that you can get over. It's like it's like crazy. And then of course all of these cards uh, are live. Nahata to lower attack. Uh, these you can't activate in battle phase. But they're you know still live. But all of these basically... Are live like the Power Rangers. Look at these colors. Yeah, but all of these are suddenly live, uh, which is really good. And they're all 1,900 each, so it's like if you have enough gas, you can easily just OTK right there. And remember, you have Lava Golem. You have stuff to get over them. That's the thing. Uh, Lava Golem is super easy to get over too. If you have like, first of all, you can like let's say you Lava Golem them, they have nothing left. You can either send Goki Pole, and then yeah, you can either send Goki Pole. And then special summon one of these and then pop the Lava Golem, which is really an easy play. Or you can do that other thing that I said, which is basically you summon three of these and then you uh, activate this effect, bring this thing back, and then pop the Lava Golem and just attack three times, which is great. So that, yeah, that's broken. Because remember, when it comes back from the graveyard, it's treated like a new monster, basically. And a new monster gets a new attack, but it's absolutely broken. But yeah, definitely that. Second effect is if a car, if a monster on your side of the field is destroyed by your opponent's card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon an insect monster, a normal insect monster, uh, from your graveyard, which is usually going to be Insect Knight. And it, it, there's actually no restriction on that in terms of levels and stuff. So if you're playing like a level 8 insect monster, you could technically special summon it off that bottom effect. I don't recommend you to, but it's like free recursion because you can use each of these effects per turn. So it's like, it's one, each effect is once per turn. So it's not, you can use both effects in one turn, which is pretty decent. So if your opponent pops something, you can bring it back. Like this, 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 the, this whole engine, the giant ballpark adds so much recursion to this deck. It's kind of nuts and it gives it so much OTK potential. Like this deck can OTK just off of two, three cards now, uh, which is kind of broken. And then we play one copy of Mystic Mind. Again, high IQ plays, right? Uh, you play Mystic Mind, obviously, if you don't know, for the set rotation. So you basically activate set rotation. Uh, you give your opponent Mystic Mind. You give yourself Giant Ballpark. But sometimes there's situations where you would want to give yourself Mystic Mind if they have a, if they overextend it and have a huge board. This is a very good going second card. Uh, but basically what you do is... Uh, yeah, you give them this, and then you take this for yourself, and you're saying to yourself, man, isn't it kind of dangerous to give your opponent Mystic Mind, especially since you're going to get all these monsters off of this? It is, but here's what you do, right? So you give them this, you give them this. You give them, you take the giant ballpark, you give your opponent the Mystic Mind, and then if you have a Vishuda, if you have a Vishuda in hand, uh, you theirs is still set because they can't activate it during their turn. You can actually summon Vishuda, link it away, and then in Graveyard, banish Vishuda, and then bounce the Mystic Mind back to your hand. 
So set rotation actually becomes a true plus one, which is kind of nuts. You can actually bounce this right back to your hand and then not be affected by it in any way. So yeah, just the killer combos continue. Uh, Vishuda is like such an unbelievable card. Anytime there's a card in Yu-Gi-Oh that bounces, you gotta like, you really gotta respect it because it's gonna have it's going to have some crazy potential. Like, bouncing cards is one of the scariest things. But basically, uh, yeah, Vishuda's nuts uh, for, for that reason. Also, if you wanted to, you can actually play, instead of the Lava Golem, although I wouldn't recommend it, you can actually play, instead of Lava Golem, you can play Kaijus if you wanted to. You can play the Insect Kaiju. I don't know how much synergy it really has with all of this considered. But yeah, it's yeah, you can play the Kaijus. Uh, next, we play one copy of Monster Reborn incredibly good card uh basically like a free monster from the graveyard you can replace this is one of the cards you can consider replacing but i think it's it's still pretty good because you can bring back one of your bigger link monsters like a link three or something and then use that for even even bigger link which is really cool yeah but basically i like monster reborn quite a lot in this deck but you could easily replace it for another hand trap and then three copies of call by the grave this last main deck card Call by the Grave is really good. It lets you go through with... You, you, there's only a few cards that your opponent can really call by the Grave. And that is the Field Spell. And... Yeah, this is the Field Spell they could call by the Grave because they can... Yeah, Field Spell. And Mare Mare they can... Veiler. There's a, there's, a, there's a few cards that they can like Veiler that are key combo cards. So there's stuff like Mare Mare the token generator there's also the one of the main cards you definitely don't want to get hand trapped which is shaman and then of course we have the vessel for the of the dragon souls which definitely you don't want to lose but there are a few cards that can get hand trapped but i would say yeah i would say keep this but i mean if you wanted to I'm, i have them out here uh you could play three impermanence if you think that would be more useful impermanence or even i don't again i don't, i think evenly matches and good you can play three red reboots you can play any going second card instead of call by the grave but definitely i in my particular from my testing i think call by the grave is pretty decent in this even going second a lot of i know a lot of people tell me going second call by the grave is a dumb card but i think it's i think it's pretty decent in that situation and now for the extra deck lots of fun love the extra deck uh, basically, to start, we play one copy of Nichiria Beast, you go second, you wreck their board. Whatever's left, uh, you just throw a Nichiria Beast down. All of the insect monsters, the normal ones I've been showing you, are Earth. And if you've ever noticed, Adhara is actually a level 1 tuner, Earth tuner. All of the insect, in, oh yeah, all of the insects here are level 4 Earths. Easy Nichiria Beast. You just, you wreck their board. And then you throw Nichiria's Beast down and you just, they can't really do anything. And especially against Sky Strikers, like there's very little that they can do against Nichiria Beast. Obviously they have some plays, hard drawing, like Widow Anchor is not going to help because you can just negate it. And then basically if they don't have Impermanence, they've lost. So that's why I really, really like this card. And what's awesome about it is every time you negate, you actually mill. First of all, the negate's not once per turn. You can negate 50 times in a duel. It doesn't matter. But basically, you mill cards off the top of your deck, and most of the time, you're milling the Tenyi monsters, and then they get additional effects in the graveyard to protect and to do all types of stuff and to bounce. And it basically gets this scary loop going where if you have if you get a Nichiria Beast on the field against the deck like Sky Strikers that rely on uh, spell cards, you, it's like an auto win. Uh, then we play one copy of Borlode Savage Dragon. Uh, there's a few ways to make this. You can use the this and this to make it. You can use the Mare Mare. Every time you use Mare Mare, it reduces the level by one, but it spawns a level one token. You can use the tokens to make a Link 3, and then the Mare Mare will be basically a level four tuner monster, and then you can use any level four in your deck and Mare Mare to make this, and then you can attach a Link monster and have free negates, which is crazy cool. Uh, we play one level four, which I'm I'm on the fence about. I don't know what I, I there's more that I can do, but at the same time I don't know. So yeah, this is probably one of the better level fours to play. You can play Tornado Dragon. You can play a few others. Uh, this is our only rank four. You, I was considering the Utopia double package, but it just adds unnecessarity to the deck. 
like the deck already has a decent amount of OTK potential as is. I don't even know if you need the Utopia Double. But you can definitely play Utopia Double. Don't get me wrong. You have a ton of level 4s in here. But I play the Abyss Dweller. And yeah, like I said, there's a few other rank 4s you can consider. I think this one's good. Uh, we play two copies of Monk. He's like one of our main combo starters. You don't have to play... You don't have to play more than that, I'd say, because number one, you can summon him back, but more importantly, usually you summon you summon a Tenyi, link it away, make a Monk, then you summon another one, you link those two away, and then you just keep one for later in your extra deck. You don't need more than that, usually. Play two copies of Shaman. This card, if you don't know, basically you discard and special summon a Worm Monster from the Graveyard. This is the easiest way to special summon Mare Mare. And what's awesome about this card is if you have a valid worm target in the graveyard, you can, let's say you have a worm, uh, Mare Mare in hand, you can discard Mare Mare and then summon the same Mare Mare that you just discarded, which is why I say it's not a brick to, to draw a Mare Mare in this deck. Because again, you have a way to discard it, and Mare Mare is one of the best plays in this deck, period. And then also when a non-effect monster attacks, you can, declares an attack, you can activate this effect, pop a card on the field, which is pretty cool. Then we play three copy, two copies of Berserker. This is like our biggest non-effect monster. You just need Link monsters to summon. He's really easy to summon. One Link Spider because the off of uh, what's his name, the Phantom. Jeez, how did I forget this? Uh, the the token generator guy, Phantom Sky Blaster. The tokens off of him aren't level one, so. You need something a little bit bigger, but they are normal monsters. And then you can summon a normal monster from your hand, which is cool. We play one copy of Link Rebo for various tokens. Proxy Dragon, because it's actually better. It's point sideways than other other cards. Most of the time you'll be summoning in the main monster zone. One copy of Appaloosa, Bow of the Goddess. Uh, free negates, super easy to make. Very good going into a battle phase. So you can just negate stuff after you destroy it. Nothing floats. You just negate all the floaters. It's awesome. You just attack, and they try to, like, oh, effect engrave. Nope, just turn that off. Uh, Mech Knight, Crusadia, Avermax. Insane card. If your opponent overextends, makes a big board, you just summon this. Attack a special summon monster. This this card, like, like sit down and read. I can't believe how cheap this card is. 13 bucks. It's probably one of the better Link 4s. Just go to TCG Player right now and just read all of this card's effects. Like, the effects are nuts. It has, like, four effects that individually are very good. And it's very easy to make. It's two monsters, special summon from the extra deck, so you summon this. Super easy to make. You can use, like, the Tenyi Link 3 monster and, like, a Proxy Spider, and then you can make it easily. And then we play one copy of Bora Load. I think it's better than Bora Sword, personally. Uh, not as much for OTKing, but very good for getting over stuff. And you spit out Link 4 so easily in this deck. You can literally make this at, at the drop of a hat. It's just so, so easy to make. You have all those token generators I showed you. And then just the regular just the regular old Tenyi engine just throws down so many quick cards. Uh, but that's it. Yeah, I'm very excited about this deck. I don't know if I can really do test hands. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see that. I don't even know how I would do test hands with this deck. Because technically it's a going second deck. So, I guess I could, like, proxy an opponent's Thunder Dragon board or something and just show you guys how to play against that. Uh, but, I, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do test hands for this. Let me know if that's something you guys want to see. I'm definitely very excited about this deck. I think it's, it's like, super fun. It's probably, it probably is the best way to play this deck, to be honest with you, because you get to utilize all of your effects. You don't just, like, make a board that you sit on, but you actually get to play all of the Tenyi monsters and, you know, activate them from Grave. I was playtesting it earlier. I was playing testing it online. I was playtesting it in person. And I, I you know, I lost very little. I, I gotta tell you. I lost very few games. Uh, it, this deck doesn't really brick all that much. Like, as long as you draw two Tenyi monsters, you can do all of your combos and set up a decent, decent attack strategy. And especially if you get to, especially if you get a Lava Golem or you get... One of the what are they? One of the homeboys, the giant giant ballpark, and you start get going off with that easily. Make one of those. Naturia beasts are spit out at at nauseum very easily. But definitely an awesome deck. Give it a try. Uh, subscribe if you enjoy the deck profile, and let me know if you want to see these test hands.